All right. Konnichiwa, bitches. This is Drinking Digital with Ricky Baizas here on the mic. This is Drinking Digital, the first and only podcast here in the Philippines about digital advertising, digital communications, digital marketing, Facebook, mobile advertising, and all of that, YouTube. We got it here. It's, this is going to be a weekly podcast. Anything you need to know about digital advertising in the Philippines, this is the podcast that you go to or listen to. We got a couple of uh, guests. Of course, what's a podcast without guests, right? We have Mr. Narciso Reyes representing Facebook, and we got Mr. Christian Bessler representing mobile advertising here in the Philippines. I'll let them introduce themselves. Narciso, would you like to start? Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Narciso Reyes. Uh, just a big shout out to everyone who's, uh, who's listening. I'm glad to be part of the program. All right, everyone. This is Christian Bessler. Um, Working for Globe Telecom as an advisor, also founder of Mobile Monday here, and I'm glad to be on the program and share my insights of the industry. That's great. Welcome, Narciso, and welcome, Christian. Let's start the show off with a little bit of an introduction. Let, uh, tell us, guys, what exactly do you do? I mean, for the benefit of our listeners out there, um, please expound or elaborate on how, what it is exactly that you do. Let's start with let's start with Narciso. Oh, okay, great. Well, I'm a regional sales director for AdMax's Facebook division uh, here in the Philippines, uh, Thailand, and Indonesia. We represent those three markets exclusively. Uh, and basically, for all intents and purposes, we are Facebook in uh, each respective market. So, Narciso, if somebody wants to, let's say, sell something or advertise something on Facebook, they go to you, right? Yeah, they should. So, what, what's, that, what's that process like? How exactly does that happen? The process is basically you, uh, you drop me an email or you call me on my, my mobile. You send me what your uh, target demographics are and what your budget is, and uh, we put a program in place for you. And what can they promote in Facebook? Anything and everything. You know, I mean, uh, we don't discriminate. But, um, of course, you'd prefer the Facebook pages. Right? You see a lot of these oh, brands oh, coming we're, up with we're, Facebook we're, we're, pages, right? right Everybody right, has right. a Facebook page I mean, nowadays. Yeah, the um, Facebook is built on three central pillars, right? It's building, engaging, and amplifying. And the central point for all of that is the Facebook page. So, uh, first step in the process is actually uh, putting yourself within the network and building that page out. So a Facebook page is free, right? Anybody can do this, right? Yeah, anybody, anybody can do it. But if they want to increase the traffic to that Facebook page, increase the likes, the sure. fans, they talk to you, right? Yeah, they talk to me. I mean, you can go about it two ways, right? You can either go about it organically, which takes, uh, you know, I mean, how much time do you have, right? Uh, and, of course, you can uh, put that on steroids by using uh, advertising, which is where you'd get in touch with me. Of course, we can provide consultation in terms of your organic uh, growth, but uh, if you really want to push the envelope and move the dial, advertising is the way to go. When you talk about Facebook ads, these are the ads on the side, right? You see those small ads on the side, on the right side of your Facebook page? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. And beside Narcisse, of course, we have Mr. Christian Bessler. Christian, tell us a little bit more about what exactly it is you do and how you promote or how you do mobile advertising, right? We got online and mobile here. So if something happens in the studio right now, the digital communications industry in the Philippines is likely to crash, right? We put it on pause for the moment. Exactly. <laughs> so well, Christian, tell us a little bit more about how you actually do mobile advertising. All right. Um, well, as Globe, we had since, uh, I guess, many years, we had our... Um, what we call traditional mobile advertisement, right? We send messages to our subscribers telling, look, there's something good going on. It was open to content providers and so on. Now, we thought it doesn't, is any longer adequate to what the market requires right now because you guys like Nestle, you want target advertisement. You go to your TVC studios and say, I need to reach this segment. So we had to come up with something similar on the telco side, actually saying, look, I can tell you exactly where are the people you need to target for your product, right? So we recently just launched, like, well, recently, let's say 10 months ago, we launched a new service called My Rewards Plus. It's very successful. We have the big shots all on board. It's going to be not yet Nestle, but we're working on you as well, as I understood. And <laughs> we got McDonald's and Co. on board. Um, we have the HSP, Citibanks. They're all very happy. Our case day is fantastic. We have fantastic response rates. 
Our risk is around 28%, which beats everything this industry has ever seen before. Our really advantage is we're permission-based. So we go out to our subscribers and tell you, would you like to receive anything interesting for your lifestyle and your given context? Okay. Where you are, time of the day, and if you're male, female, and so on. And we're not taking this out of our database. We just sell, we ask you, tell me what do you would like to see. So how, how, do you, how exactly do you do that? I mean, is it an SMS blast? Do you send it out to all the subscribers? Originally, yes, we had like SMS blast. We looked in our databases. I mean, you know, we are telco, so we got those uh, databases behind us. And we looked at it like, who would be interested? What kind of demographics would be interested? Now, in the Philippines, it's mainly women. Okay. And that also is reflected in our program. We have like 60% women who are usually looking for, you know, um, they're hunting for that special thing, that special, you know, discount sales and so on. They would like to be updated about what's happening. So it's, we went out in our base. We had like promos, roughly. You could win fantastic prizes. We flew people to Hong Kong, Boracay and so on just to create awareness. But overall, it's, we respect the privacy. You don't want it, you will not be bothered with it. This is the whole principle behind it. Yes. You mentioned prince, uh, permission marketing. Permission Can you elaborate a little bit permission on what permission means. marketing is? Well, today we all get those. You know, I get five times a day, I get offered a cash loan. Or okay. if, I have, if I have three years long a credit card, I can immediately apply for a cash loan. So we're different. We say we don't want to bother you with that, right? Okay. By the way, that's not coming from any telco network. There's usually people just scanning for random numbers and sending you SMS. What we say is we ask you, would you like to receive relevant advertisement? Okay. From our brands, be it a McDonald's, be it uh, HSBC, Citibank, and mm-hmm. so on, right? Would you like to receive advertisement? Then the people say yes. And then we ask you, what would you like to receive? Okay. So tell us a bit more about you. What's your age? Because that's relevant. You know, there's okay. a difference between somebody being in in the 20 to 30 and somebody being between maybe 80 to 20. You have different interests, right? And brands try to actually elaborate on that one. So we actually ask. Now, in exchange for receiving those ads, we give you rewards points. We say, hey, it's not... It's not like a free trade, right? You get something for it. You get infos and promos, and then the other, on top of it, we give you rewards points, which you can deem they are part of our My Rewards program. You can get like Jollibee stuff and so on, right? So that's just the way how it works, yeah? And we have seen it be very successful when we do permission-based. First of all, people are not getting annoyed. They don't call your customer service and say, wow, I just received this McDonald's advertisement. I don't want it. They say, oh, yeah. That fits me. I'm actually right now in Makati, and I would like to have that. And I just go over there, and I grab that burger I got for free. Okay. So that's the way it works. And we believe if we put privacy first, ask your permission what is relevant for you, you actually will enjoy it much more than if you get this cash loans or whatever. You know, you yeah. can get a car now for free if you call us. Okay. Like so it's really about protecting privacy and asking you what you would like to have. That's but really um, when you right. ask these questions about who they are, how old they are, what their interests are, when they reply to these survey questions, do they actually pay for that? Are they charged no. like one peso the when they reply to that? Oh well, principle, it has to be free for consumers, our subscribers, because otherwise you would not express yourself if you get charged for it, right? Of course. And why would you be willing to receive any kind of advertisement, let's say from a Nestle saying you how fantastic their coffee is, mm-hmm. if you get charged for it, right? No, the whole program is for free. We have all zero rated everything. We're trying to enforce that um, everything from two to three nine, we try to build a sort of level of trust saying everything from our, it's our short code from my rewards plus two, three, nine is zero rated. Trust us. We're not going to share your data with anybody. It's with us. We as a telco are regulated by the government. What we do with your data, we're not going to share with anybody. So it's zero rated. We extend this as well for our mobile websites because mm-hmm. there is a lot of fear. You know, if I go on the internet today, I get this bill shock. That's how my CEO called it. And mm-hmm. it actually reflects that people went to mobile internet site and suddenly they found themselves with 5,000 pesos on their That's door, crazy, right? yeah. So we say, you know, to take out that fear, we're just zero rated for you. you. A brand wants to set up a mobile site, part of their campaign, we just zero rate it. Just go there without any fear. Okay, so when the consumers reply to these questions, they don't have to be scared about uh, their load getting deducted, no, right? No, no. Okay, it's but totally that's just a way rated. for you to profile them better so you can offer them more targeted 
well, uh, promotions. It's it's more part of, you know, let's be fair and straight up front and say, look, you'll not get charged for that. Um, for sure, when you respond to a certain brand, that brand feels there is a certain bus in the market regarding its mm-hmm. offer, right? So it will more most likely target again this crowd of people, plus maybe add a bit more because they feel, okay, this is people engaging with my brand. Okay. I would like to go after them. Let's say, you know, we, we have seen campaigns where brands tried out new product. They figured, okay, based on the interest, it must be mums in this age segment. And the response was overwhelming. It went even viral. Okay. So it went out beyond the original target base. And that's actually what brands appreciate. They can try out stuff without actually losing the touch to the consumer. Because okay. people will just respond, I don't like it. That's right. Or I like it. But if, if ever they want to opt out, you talked about opting in, yeah. right, to these communications. If they opt out, how do they actually do that? You simply text stop. It's a Stop it. Stop. stop sending me this shit. I mean, in the Philippines, you know, it's, it's regulated. Any kind of service must be immediately shut off when you text stop. That's the key word you need okay. to know in this country. If anybody bothers you. So if one of those guys, like, I always get these. You know, I get it all the time as yeah, well, man. Yeah, loans. Yeah, 1.49% yeah. <laughs> for like up to I can a million show you. Yesterday pesos. I got one. You have been a three years credit card holder. Would you apply off a 12.5% credit card? Why? It's yeah. higher than what I got now, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's just um, you can file that case with the NTC. Unfortunately, the NTC has its downfalls. But usually your telcos take it very seriously. You mm-hmm. can just, we have numbers you can forward it. Or you just text it me. I file it internally. We're trying to stop these people. Okay. Right, but any kind of bus service you might have subscribed to in the past, like you've got those ringtones and all this stuff, you can simply text stop. It's an industry-wide uh, keyword which the provider has to accept and immediately opt you out. We do the same. Okay. If you don't like it, you text stop. Mm-hmm. We ain't gonna bother you. So the magic word is stop. Yeah. Just reply stop to yeah. these things. If you don't and you feel any longer that the rewards point you get or the benefits you get out of the program are to any advantage, then you just simply stop it. We won't bother you with anything in the future. Okay. That's what I mean with permission-based. Respect privacy. If you don't want it, mainly we see people doing it when they go abroad. Let's say you go on a business travel, you fly to Europe. If you would receive advertisement in Europe, it would be quite expensive for you because it's an abroad message. That's, That's right. For free because they're roaming partners we're, charging we're you. Roaming, what, we, what, yeah. We, yeah, what we tell people, just press stop. If you come back, just text plus again and you're in. Can okay. I stop when you guys send me my roaming bill? <laughs> <laughs> you can call us and we figure a way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Um, for our listeners out there, you may have noticed that our guests have um, accents, and from the from the video video cast, you can see uh, Christian here is white. Narciso looks Filipino, but he he sounds like an American. Excuse me, I mean we, we, we share the same. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more of exactly about where you guys are from, and what are you doing here in the Philippines? Oh, Narciso, can we start with you? Here? Yeah. Wow, this is, uh, this is kind of like a convoluted story. So how did I get here? I, how did you end up in the Philippines, well, for, my friend? First of all, I was born here, so I think this is a little bit So you, you're Filipino? Yes. You are Filipino, yeah. okay. And uh, I was trained at one of the call centers. That's why I've got this accent. <laughs> but no, but, but seriously, right? I mean, uh, yeah, can't you tell I'm a J.P. Morgan rep? Yep, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, I grew up in the States. My dad was a diplomat. So uh, we spent most of our time in the U.S. So that and and I went to university there. I went to high school there. I spent a good part of my uh, my early life there. Probably about well, half. Yeah, yeah, half. Uh, what what am I right now? Forty almost. Yeah. So about twenty twenty odd years. Okay, guys, if you don't see, he got gray hair already. <laughs> <laughs> getting getting grayer by the moment, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I've always had an affinity to to the Philippines. I mean, not just from a heritage standpoint, but like from a business standpoint as well, right? I came here after university, got my first job out here. I worked for a local um, investment banking house called All Asia. Um, you know, I had a green card. Figured I'd go back to the U.S. and um, wanted to do something completely different. So I f- started out at this uh, small shop called Wired. I don't know if y'all heard Wired of that. the magazine? Wired.com, yeah, the, okay. the digital version, right? So okay. we, had a, we had an office uh, south of Market in San Francisco, uh, hired by a guy, a uh, guy by the name of Rick Boyce. This okay. guy's a um, legend. I mean, he, he, he sold the first uh, 468 by 60 
Banner uh, ad. F- sold the first, yeah, sold the first piece of display advertising online. Uh, so started there, went over to Singapore, worked with Lycos and Singtel for a little bit. Um, went back to the U.S. and uh, did a stint at DoubleClick and Google. DoubleClick with Google. Yeah, yep. So spent about, yeah, almost five years there. And then uh, an ex-client actually made me an offer I couldn't refuse to come back to the Philippines and uh, head up their sales team here. Uh, So, well, I guess this is kind of being broadcast, so it's no secret now. But I used to work for a social networking company called Friendster. Friendster, Uh, yeah. Back in the day. Uh, huge. Used to be huge, huge. in the Philippines. 45 yeah. million registered friends users. Country, you my friend. your account or you already deleted it? Uh, no, it's since morphed into a gaming site. So uh, That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't spend much time there. I'm, yeah, I'm fortunate because I get to spend... Uh, I'm actually paid to, to be on Facebook. So, um, you know, I mean, that, that, that's how I ended up back here was through Friendster. And then, uh, you know, one thing led to another. And... Uh, I'm now heading up uh, Facebook sales here. Cool. What about you, Christian? So we know Narciso is Filipino, so it's easy for him to go back here and operate here. But uh, Christian, can you tell us some, what I mean, are you, my friend? Are you? Okay, I'm German. You're German. Okay. But part of my U.S. immigration requirement was that I get rid of my German accent, so um, <laughs> to be allowed to study in the U.S. So I had to get rid of it. Otherwise, I can also speak in a German accent if you want. <laughs> um, well, you know, why, origi- why, why the Philippines? Well, you know, originally I'm from Berlin, and part Berlin, of my, okay, yeah, Berlin. You know, it's east or west. East. I was born under the Red Star. Yeah. Ah, I uh, see. Yeah. So it was a fantastic time by the time. You know, we didn't have to care about capitalism all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Making money? <laughs> making money? Why? We just live free and happily, you know, <laughs> driving Mercedes and all that. You don't need it. Just be happy. Uh, well, no. Actually, part of my, you know, after the wall went down and all that stuff, we know it. Um, I was pretty young when the wall went down, so it didn't how, bother how me How old much. were you, my friend? 14 years old. My grandmother 14. was actually more worried that the western part is invading the eastern part because, you know, she was worried because they were standing on the border control. And she was like, they're all coming now. <laughs> it actually, it was the other way. Everybody from the east was escaping to the west. So God bless my grandmother, by the way. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, you know, I went studying in, um, in a small town in Germany. And part of that, they had a nice exchange program at Columbia University, okay, um, which brought me over there to make my master degrees, spent some fantastic time in New York. Uh, I actually, I admit it, and to my uh, professors all the way, I partied more in New York than I actually made my degree. But nevertheless, Columbia gave me some degrees. Uh, from there, I used to work for the SAP. It was the most boring job in my oh, wait. life. Before you get into that, what did you study back in university? Uh, I have a master in financial economics, which is... You know, tell you financial economics sounds awfully boring, man. Well, it tells you if a country is screwed up and hits the bottom line or not. Okay, that's all about, and it helps a lot if you talk to people about Excel sheets. You know, they're pretty impressed if you can come up with this. Pivot tables, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wow, people they make a forecast and they. They go on the needles and they they pray for you, right? Uh, Well, it never had really brought anything to my life, that kind of degree. But nevertheless, I also have a degree, a master in computer science. And that was actually more the way I was heading. Okay. Um, Got a job with the SAP. They offered me to... uh, SAP. 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 Yeah. I hate SAP. Well, you know, we are German, so the first job in your life you have to have is SAP. Okay. That's just a rule of life. Um, (laughs) I hated it, too. (laughs) Nevertheless, but it... They paid me you know, to be around in New York. We did a project for the Bank of New York trying to figure out their banking system. And, you know, it annoyed me that I looked at trillions of dollars moving in front of my screen while I had only a measly salary. So <laughs> I decided to embezzle. <laughs> yeah, to go lost. I Then I worked for some months with a... Um, Art collective or art community, you would call it, The Thing, by that time, big time in New York. And it brought me back to that New York uh, art Thursday where you get totally wasted every Thursday. You have a fantastic time and you just actually, you know, walk from gallery to gallery. Okay. All right. So that, nevertheless, you know, as, as SAP doesn't want to pay me any longer, I had to find a new living. So I headed up over to Milan where I used to work for a spinoff from Tree Italy and Hutchison. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Lee Kaching, you know, big time in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, we did a lot of uh, mobile TV related stuff. We launched the first mobile TV service worldwide. We had like million subscribers. And it was all about mobile media. Now that company sold me as a consultant to something in South Africa, but I uh, want to do something similar. So I ended up in Johannesburg, um, 
found it pretty cool. And then they said, you know, somehow the ratio of white people to colored people in South Africa is not in your advantage any longer. You might go somewhere else, right? So was this uh, pre-apartheid? Or was no, that was afterwards when yeah. they started to get, get – it went a bit nasty down there. So that's one problem. Uh, so they just posted me to the Philippines. Took Globe. Globe at the time also looked in a mobile media project and okay. looked for somebody. And I arrived here when I just turned 30. Okay. Um, my desk was not ready, so my project manager by that time told me, why don't you go to Boracay? I did. I got lost for many days. They were, <laughs> they were So you've been, to, you've been to Boracay? Yeah, I landed literally in Manila, and two days later I flew to Boracay. How, how long ago was this, sorry? It was four years ago. Four years ago, okay. All right, four years ago. So I had the introduction to the Boracay nightlife, and it was still pretty cool. I got lost. I lost everything, passport, credit card, <laughs> and so on. I did, well, my wife did they call it the expert syndrome, which every expert going to this country has to go through just to find his proper way. Mm -hmm. Well, then after a while, Globe just offered me, said, why don't you work for us, you know? And then I ended up with uh, what we call today the new business group, and we do everything non-related to core, and I actually love it. It's a great job because we're not that much bothered by our own, you know, telco world or something. We can just go out there, find new revenues, uh, and do interesting projects for our consumers and actually try to enrich their lives with something useful rather than, you know, like only calls and so on. Mm -hmm. so, now, so now you guys are here in the Philippines. You've spent a few years here, yeah. four or five years here in the Philippines. What can you say is unique about the Philippine market? I mean, everybody knows that the Philippines is the SMS uh, capital of the world. And now you hear that the Philippines is also the, the SNS or the social network capital of the Philippines. Why, why do you think that is so? What makes the Philippines unique wherein mobile advertising will work here, Facebook advertising will work here? I mean, you guys are staying here. You're here, right? Why is that? You know what it is, man. It's just people love to just talk about other people. They like to hear what, you know, their tita is doing, what their cousins are doing, what their friends are doing, what that guy was doing last night with that girl, or why was this person doing that, you know? And, and the platform, right, is the perfect conduit for that type of shared experience. And uh, it's just one of those things about Filipino culture is that we're a very social people by nature. And uh, what Facebook does is serves as, as, as that online extension for that. It right? facilitates it, right? It facilitates it, exactly. I mean, at its core, basically, Facebook is a communications platform. Um, there is this, um, they say that there's, because uh, we are huge on OFWs, right? There's a uh, huge displacement of Filipinos all over the world. Does that have anything to do with that? Why yes. social networks are very successful here in the Philippines? I'd say absolutely, right? I mean, going, going back to my friends today's, um, how one person in Northern California begat 45 million registered users, right? I mean, I, I think it plays a huge part. Um, in um in who we are as a people and you know i mean um that, that that's the thing i mean it's the Filip filipino diaspora right everybody's all over the place and we still hold uh family and friends dear to our hearts it's how do we communicate with them right i mean you take a look at what's going on here on an average sunday right it's like people with their families that's right, right? and that's what they do on uh, on the platform is they interact with that with their families with their extended families um, and you know Filipino extended families I mean how many are there right? yeah yeah so uh, it's like I guess if you uh, just do the uh, extension of the social graph we're all kind of interrelated anyway right so can, can we put that uh, a little bit into perspective Narcy so how sure. does the Philippines actually fare compared to our neighboring Asian countries when it comes to Facebook usage or penetration? Where, where are we at? Well, in terms of online penetration, depending on what numbers you're looking at, right? I mean, uh, that graphic you posted the, uh, earlier today had us at about 29.7 million internet users. So there are close to 30 million Filipinos online right now out of the 100 million Filipinos? Yeah. Okay. And out of that, right, I mean, 
I'm sure you've used the uh, our advertising platform on Facebook to kind of pull the reach numbers and whatnot and see how many people are actually on Facebook. On Facebook, right? How and many Filip- How get. many Filipinos are on Facebook? Right now, number the official five, right? yeah, the official number is going to be anywhere between twenty five and twenty six million, but you got to keep this in mind, right? What the system does is it actually underreports that number by about fifteen percent. Oh, okay, right, okay. And the reason they do that is uh, inventory control, so they want to make sure, from an operational standpoint, that they're going to be able to serve all the advertising that is uh, is currently being run through the system. So if you take that 25 million, right, and you add that 15%, you're looking at basically 100% penetration in the Philippines. Everybody who's online in the Philippines is on Facebook. Probably within, yeah, a couple of, like, tenths of a percentage point likely has a Facebook account, if not two, right? So, uh, yeah, we're, and that's, that's um, I mean, that's a pretty big number in terms of, where we are in terms of like, yeah, your, your total online population versus what you have as a Facebook population. But how do you compare that to, to other, let's say, maybe other, like a Malaysia yeah, like, or Indonesia? So like Indonesia, right? I mean, that's where we're seeing a lot of growth. They've currently got about 45 million people. Mostly on mobile, actually. Yeah, it's a BlackBerry country. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, it is. I heard that. They I heard that. a huge country. rise of Blackberries in the last in Indonesia. 12 months. It's... I think the data rates went dramatically down and also BlackBerry itself did an aggressive push to kick out everybody else in the market. And second, you have a phenomenon called blueberries. Blueberries. What is that? It's a BlackBerry ripoff with the same functionality and network capabilities, tapping in a sort of different messaging network. But somehow they were able to connect it to the BlackBerry messenger network. And so one out of every three BlackBerries is a blueberry. Okay. So the growth was mainly fueled by a low cost device which offered the same capabilities and social networking functionality. And then they just offered like what we have today here is like 10 pesos a day. You can go on Facebook all day long from your mobile. So that just tremendously pushed it up. Wow. They have really the largest, I think, when RIM is dropping all over the world, in yeah. Indonesia, they're holding... They're all my buddies out. in Indonesia, yes. they're all on BlackBerry. It's a status symbol in the first place. It is, it like is. It I heard came this. in the Philippines as well, but then here's always a balance between the iPhone and the BlackBerry. Yeah, what I've actually been finding in the Indonesian market is that people will have two phones, right? <laughs> Most people will have a BlackBerry because everybody's on it, The right? BBM thing. Right, yeah. and then as a status symbol, you're cool if you have an iPhone, so yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll walk around yeah. with both. That's true, that's true. Well, here's also, I mean, in general, here's you have also a two phones. <laughs> there, there you go. Right. Two, <laughs> we found one too. <laughs> so, Narciso, um, where does the Philippines stand in the Asian region compared to like Indonesia and Malaysia in and Thailand, Singapore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in terms of. Are we like number one? Are we number one in yeah, the. We're, we're pretty much saturated when it comes, to, comes down to uh, your online population versus your Facebook population, right? Okay. So, like I said, I mean, we are. If if you want to call us the social networking capital of the world, on in terms of uh, how we stack up against online penetration versus Facebook usage, then yeah, definitely. You know, another number to throw out there is uh, in terms of the global average for Facebook usage is at about twenty two minutes. Right. Okay. Globally. This is uh, the the length of time that they yeah, spend, that on, Facebook, spend right? on Facebook, right? Facebook. Where is the Philippines at? We spend seventy five bloody minutes online on Facebook. This is every day. Every day, every day, an hour and fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Is devoted to Facebook usage. What do we do on Facebook? What do what what do Filipinos like to do on Facebook? Is it the the chat? I think. It's, do we like it, to it, look it, at yeah. photos or what is it? Th- most people spend out of that seventy-five minutes. People spend about sixty-five of those minutes on the um, on the homepage, Check on the the news feed. Yep. The, the, when the you page. log in, the the first thing you see, right? Exactly. So you look at the news feed about right. whatever people are doing, right? Yeah, they're going to the bathroom, you know, or whatever they're lunch, what whatever right? lunch they're having sure. at that particular day, right? They're checking in at an airport. Seventy-five minutes. Seventy-five minutes. That is crazy. Seventy-five minutes. A day. A day. Damn. All right. 
Now, um, that's what, the highest number I've seen. No, I have this. I have this question for for Narcisse. So, what percentage of that actually access through mobile? Because I know the younger kids, right? They sure. do this on mobile, right? Um, and don't hold me to this, right? But I think the last number I saw was around like six, six point five million. Six point five million. Yeah, actually so out access of, out of out of roughly. If you go by my plus fifteen percent number, right, uh, thirty million. That is crazy. It's not bad. It's not crazy. bad. Yeah. yeah. But what's um? I know um. My mom is on Facebook, and she. My mom, by the way, is in the states, and my mom is. My mom is what? My mom is like sixty-two years old now, but she's constantly. On Facebook, there is this misconception that Facebook is only for the young ones, the youngsters, right? But when Actually, I yeah. when, but when I when I get these messages from my mom, I'm like thinking, there's probably a bigger demographic of the older people being on Facebook. That's right? where we're actually seeing the fastest growth. The fastest growth. Yeah, right now. And what what would that segment be? Uh, it's like 55 and higher. 55 and higher. Yeah. It's the fastest growing segment on right. Facebook. And I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, because the guys who are going to come online first are those like first adapters, right? Uh -huh. And for the most part, those are going to be people who are going to be technologically savvy. They're also going to tend to skew younger, right? They're comfortable with technology. They've grown up with technology. So you'll reach your saturation points a lot higher, right? Okay. But in terms of the older demographics, right? Like when you're pushing... Right, the the pre-internet generation. These guys are just kind of catching on to the phase, or the the I don't want to call it a fad, but uh, they're, they're they're catching on to this trend, and they're finding it, or they're they're communicating on the platform just as avidly, if not more, than someone who's like thirteen. Uh, 13, That's right. The, the thirteen to twenty-four slot, right? I mean, for them, I mean, you, you think about how you interact with your grandparents, right? These guys are always, what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. who are you seeing? Why aren't you married? You know, like st <laughs> stuff, stuff like that, right? Who's, who's this girl I saw you with? On, on your photo, uh, on, yeah, on, yeah. Yeah, in the photo. Why haven't I met her, right? And you take that <laughs> and you factor in the amplification and the added engagement that the platform offers. And then, yeah, I mean, these guys are hooked, right? Uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's like the... Uh, the, the people at the uh, casinos with uh, once you start yeah you with start uh, with yeah. The slot machines just keep on hitting the button right yeah yeah all right so um but so I think, I think to add one thing also the way how you can access Facebook today I mean technology look at the iPad and so on has so mm -hmm. improved it became sure. so more user friendly to go online remember when I went right. first time into the internet we slept a dial up modem like fifty six k and it made like more noise than a bird today right so. <laughs> Um, you you couldn't even use letters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had it was already, it was three, three, already worse, and worse to write a German uh, email in an American <laughs> keyboard, I can tell you. Looking for uh -huh. an urn, you had like to press right. three buttons at the same time. Um, but nevertheless, I think technology advances so fast. And I think based on that, you know, this Moore's law that we are getting faster and so on. And if you look at the iPad, and I, I just saw a recent study, I think by Nielsen, but I hope Nielsen doesn't sue me for it, <laughs> that um, the iPad is mainly adopted more and more by an age segment above 40. Really? It's, you know, like you, like, like you mentioned, it was right. like the early adopters, they loved it, but now it goes, goes mainstream. And okay. it, it's, it becomes so user-friendly, you know, you can touch it. And for somebody in an age 50 and above, a mouse is more complicated than just touch buttons. Right? That's right. Say, you just touch it. It's more natural. We touch things every day. You touch the doorknob. You touch interesting women. No, I don't know what you do, right? I uh, don't know about that, man. Uh, right, uh, so, you know, it's like, it's like the same thing. It's just a more natural behavior. Tactile. It, it Tactile. Make, haptile. Yeah. yeah, it makes it more easy for people to use technology. Sure. And I think that adds a lot to social networks, how people use the internet. Look, Google search. They made it friendly on an iPad. You That's right. You don't need the time any longer. You can just... You know, tag, oh, you might like this. Oh, and you say, yes. Oh, now you might like this. And then so just the way it goes. So I think, and looking from a revenue point, everybody above 40 made his money, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to tap in that market, you have to offer something which is These are These are the retirees, right? No, they, 40, you're, no, let's say. Not yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look yeah. at 40, your kids are out of the house. You, like the American standard is like, you paid off your mortgage. Yeah. 
if you didn't went bankrupt during that crisis. Um, you paid off your car, so you have free available income, which you can spend. Then they go all on a cruise ship and whatever, or they go to Florida, yeah. watch the alligators, stuff like that, <laughs> right? Uh, so the available income is huge. And now they go online. Yeah. The same, I'm so, assuming... So you get this, like, bored housewife syndrome, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm assuming released a study. Their biggest buyers are from that segment, 40 and above. Okay. Kindle users. They're just like, oh, I like this. You sit there, like you said, housewives. I sit in front of you. Yeah. I like that. Buy. Oh, well, it doesn't interest me any longer after page two, but I bought it. Right? It's just like available. You have to look in all this new technology. If the youngster and hipsters, they're just like the first one to try it out. If it takes off there, you make revenues out of mainstream, right? Okay. It's like Facebook is the same like any telco. Yeah, you need a critical same. mass. You need a critical mass so that push in that direction and then you can really say, now... You just do small enhancement to actually adjust the market. Sure, because the scale is already yeah. there. Go, uh, talking about scale and going back to the numbers, Christian, can you can you give some light on the numbers in the Philippines? I mean, we know we are the SMS capital of the world. Everybody no longer, here no texts. Longer, no we longer. we are not. Yeah, but no. talking about the mobile internet, for example, yeah. I think I what th- are the what are the exact numbers? I mean, how many of our handsets actually can access the internet? How many of us have the smartphones? All right, I think we. And I apologize for that. You guys are no longer the SMS capital. We're not. India yeah, that's just right. took you over. And, you know, they took you over by millions. <laughs> there are a lot that's of them. That's right. <laughs> yes, there you meant. There are a lot of them. them. <laughs> so if they moved, it's just like five more million, five more yeah, million people, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, you know, internet, um, what, you know, there is a big of fear, uh, sort of fear in terms of using mobile internet here. And then it plays also around, you know, like there's always a sort of destructive perception. The Philippines... You still have, like, out of the 90 million people who have mobile phones, SIM cards, like, dual SIMs and so on. Yeah. You can only say maybe uh, 5 to 10% of what we call today a smartphone. Okay. Right? How it's, do you actually define a smartphone well, anyway? a smartphone, I think, is defined by anything which has, like, more than a 2.8-inch screen and has advanced features in terms of GPS and touchscreen. Okay. Right? So, um Nokia will probably beat me for that because none of their phones yet fulfilled this. <laughs> but, okay, they are not any longer... A substantial no, but I know I know this market um, looks at a smart uh, a touch screen yeah. as a smartphone. As yes. long as it's touch screen, yeah, it's smartphone. It's a smartphone rather. Yes, I think it, it needs some advan- um There was a I think on Mashable there was an article about what what makes a decision for a smartphone it was yeah. maybe GPS, certain amount of memory, video playback capabilities, that's right, that's and right. a touch screen. If I remember well, right. Um, but there's a huge market here out of feature phones. Feature phones is mainly they try to copy smartphone features, but they don't have like the advanced performance and so on. And this is actually a, a vast market going into mobile internet. This like, is why you're here, right? Yes, I mean. Smartphones is one thing, so you have like um, international companies going for that. So I don't know how many uh, access or people access Facebook mobile to their smartphone, but I think you just started recently offering it for free on feature phones here. And yeah. that has a huge uptake. Sure, we're really excited about that actually because we've got this new Java app, right? Which will basically yeah. turn Every feature any phone. Java, yeah, yeah, base phone into almost practically a smartphone. Just to explain, experience. Java is like a. A language they use to program applications on it. It's supported by lore and phones. You don't need a high fancy A5 application right. processor like the what Steve Jobs always says. Sure. This new thing is A5, A6. If he's still there in five years, he probably has an A10 or whatever. Okay. Audi will love him for that. Um, so the feature phones just <laughs> enable it all. The massive growth of mobile internet is actually educating people what you can do. But Facebook is actually pulling them in. People okay. go to the mobile internet today because there's Facebook. Yeah, it's a time suck. It's like you guys love before, it from a before, data perspective. Before, before you had to tell them, look, there's nothing wrong going to the mobile internet. There, you can surf and browse and Google. And people said, I don't need it. I can go to an internet cafe for ten pesos. I can surf and browse there, right? That's right. But now that Facebook phenomena sucks people in to be constantly online. To constantly check what are their friends doing, what their family relatives doing, who posted what, and what cheesemies and gossip is going on and it's that whole thing which drives Filipinos to the mobile internet and we see a tremendous growth tremendous okay. growth on that one and I think it will actually continue to grow like this and you know we naturally forecast DSL and all this fixed thing mm-hmm. it's going to be that maybe in five years because you don't need it Okay. It's so I mean, it's so expensive to put a cable in the ground and all that stuff why do it if people just access applications on their mobile phones right? Okay. And 
you have to give credit to people like Facebook and Twitter. They actually created this this buzz around. That's you have right. to be online. That's, right. I mean, that's why you see the two players right now doing really low cost, cheap, always on plans where it's about, you know, like, um, I guess you, we all, we have smartphone only plans where we can surf as much as we want. But if you actually only want to be on a Facebook, you don't need a 900 megabyte, whatever data plan. You just need every day. You, it's all compressed. So, with this new kind of data offers, we will see that we'll go further and there will be Twitter, whatever yeah. applications. And we like that because that drives our usage. Yes. I mean, well, right? as you so. mentioned, social networks, all these applications are somehow interconnected. They're just, you know, linked to each other. So you, your friends post something on Twitter like, oh, wow, I met this. I'm marrying this girl right like, now. And then you <laughs> click on that Twitter link and it links to the Facebook, right? Yeah. And at the same, Google Plus is doing now the same. It's just integrating all their services. So... What you will have on your mobile phone, be it feature phone or smartphone, it's just like you just get from one service to service. What we see further is like it's no longer about website. It's about applications. Okay. People hardly distinguish any longer and it doesn't appear any longer like with your Facebook application. Right. It's actually a website inside sure. an application, sure. right? But for people, it's like they click on an icon rather than the web browser typing URLs yeah. and all that yeah. we did in the exactly. 80s, right? So for them, it's like I have an application. As long as I'm in this application, I don't pay anything. Okay. So that's also this argument behind it. Yeah, there's this perception that you're not actually online. I'm not online. I'm not in a web browser. I'm in this application. And I know as long as I'm in the Twitter application, I'm in the Facebook application, I don't pay anything. So people have this application constantly open because they know it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. Right? Um, It's a bit of backdrop for a telco because we have constantly to provide data bandwidth and it doesn't come for free, right? But... I think we see this transition, and it's very encouraging that, um, as you mentioned, the 6.5 million people is actually the urban area, right? That it grows out of what we call Metro Manila. Like, I mean, you as an advertiser, you mm-hmm. know, Metro Manila is a key market, but you have to grow beyond this to actually reach a critical scale sure. in the Philippines. And if you have, like, one day we might have 20 million mobile users on mobile internet, that is where I say is really we have achieved yeah, because something. Because on, online and mobile are there. It's seamless that today. It's have, seamless. Right? I mean, it is. Yeah. If you never used a computer before, like I would say, maybe in the Philippines, I, I saw a statistic. Maybe only forty percent of Filipinos have actually a PC at home. Sure, but everybody's okay. got a phone. But everybody everybody's got a phone. Got, like, got not, a phone. No, everybody got two phones actually. Because yeah. Dual SIM or three SIM. Mm-hmm. I saw a phone lately which right. has three SIMs. Three sims. Yeah, the three players in the market, right? So that's no, maybe the number three gets bankrupt or bought by somebody else. We don't know. Um, but it's a rule sim. of three, right? Yeah, it's three. So it has three. You like, can take three in a market. Um, it's really, for people, it's like, I'm not online. I'm just using an application. And when you launch an application, say, as long as you're staying within this wall garden, we call it, right? Yeah, it's the for wall free. garden. So you're actually encouraged. So what you guys at Facebook do, you cross-sell. Absolutely. What else can I offer in there? Games. And beat me, but Filipinos love games. Right? Okay. I love games, but I've never seen a country which is more engaged on uh, Farmville. On Farmville, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've got wow. I mean, Plants vs. Zombies. My own Forget wife was it. addicted. She was like, look, the time on the iPhone went on. Like, I have to harvest now. I was like, good. And I got in this too. With my, Outlook reminders, right? With my, with my Italian uh, flatmate by that time, we were actually battling. And like, he woke up at uh, four in the morning just to harvest. I like, <laughs> it was insane. But actually, I think if you look at gaming, and it has a huge gaming developer community as well. It's mm-hmm. one of the huge sources, I think, for revenues in the future where actually the Philippines will drive. I'm okay. pretty sure because okay. you have this mobile phone penetration. I mean, we Europeans were lazy with our mobile phones. My mother had a mobile phone. They got disconnected because she didn't use it for a year. Okay. So the, the phone carrier thought she's dead. <laughs> She, she just doesn't think a mobile phone is necessary. But it's just a different mentality, right? Sure. The U.S. is behind Asia. Asia is leading the pack. This is where it's at, right? Yeah, when it where, comes where, to mobile, That's where right? companies at Sunnet. You look at a company in Silicon Valley, Sun Valley. The first thing they will do when they get a VC, they say, we have to go to Asia. What's our game plan for Asia? Yeah, right? you know, what are we going to do there, right? Yeah. Because here is where innovation is set. And I think the Philippines is going to be a crucial part in it because of its mobile phone penetration mm-hmm. and mobile phone usage. It's just like... Go to a bar here and observe. You will see everybody has a phone in his hand. They don't even put it on the bar. They have it in his hand and it's over. That's and it's right. actually socially accepted to text during dinner. Try this in New York. Maddening. Maddening. <laughs> Try this. Maddening. Go to Chelsea Maddening. Meat District. Go yeah, to yeah, Buddha yeah. Bar there. 
text during a dinner. You get thrown out. Everybody stands up and walks out and just thinks you're disgusting. Right. Like you're, you're a pariah all yeah, of a sudden, you're socially right? socially not accepted. What is, what is here, wrong when I you? arrived here, I found it offending too. But then somebody told me, just start texting too. <laughs> yeah, so people yeah. actually text you during dinner and it's socially accepted. In the cinemas, people, in a meeting play, room, in church. They play Farmville on their yeah, mobiles I, here. I, I have a standing yeah. order at dinner that phone church phone. Phone. church yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean right. not really a big church girl I can't tell it but I know when people on Sunday morning 11 o'clock p- playing any game on Facebook yeah. that's not on their computers that's yeah. on their mobiles and they're probably yeah. praying at the same time yeah right, right? Taking so confession. it's just and this factor that we don't have this um, ballast you know this burden we carry like in Europe that everything was a computer mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. Know, people don't it's like you know when what they always tell you know emerging nations skip the coal age goes straight to the space age. Mm-hmm. It's happening here. People see their mobile as their computer. A modern smartphone has already today more s- processing power than it. That's right. That's and right. And Intel CPU like, back like mm-hmm. 20 years ago. The thing they flew to the moon, it's beaten out by a Samsung Galaxy today. That's right. right. So we, we were talking about, uh, earlier we were talking about the, the 40 above in Facebook. I'd like to think that mobile internet um, here in the Philippines, for example, is used more by the younger demographic. Is this is this a fact? Uh, are the surprised. numbers actually, skewing more towards the younger ones? Skewed towards the younger ones. You'd be surprised. I mean, I know it from our MAT service. Mm-hmm. We have a large base who is 45 and above, and they're equally equally outweighing the younger ones. So it's not like that is uh, only. A, a service used by younger, mainly just because look at the iPhone or the iPad. They're using more, let's say, easier to use devices to go online, but they're constantly online as well. Mm-hmm. I would also think it's um, in terms of smartphone usage that it would be driven by uh, economics, right? I mean, oh, you're, well, you're definitely seeing that the take up rate is higher for people in like a certain economic age when you have things, reached, I mean, you made your income, lines, right? you have your fixed salary, yeah. right? I mean, we still have a huge gap in income in the Philippines. Don't forget about it. That's why I'm saying feature phones is like a key driver in India and the Philippines. That's right. I mean, if you look at the Cherry Mobiles, all that. They have found Cherry that, Mobile is they huge, have found man. A niche, mm-hmm. But they, they're enabling Facebook, Twitter, and so on. And this is going to be a long time around because we're not going to see an exploding economic growth that immediately drives 60 million people into an AB segment, right? So we... And... We have to help those people. And mobile is one way to get information to them, and be it Facebook, make them connected. It's just a matter um, teaching them how to use it. Mm-hmm. And they're, rather than spending probably, I mean, if you have, if you make your call center agent, you make 15,000 pesos a month, right? Entry level positions. You rather spend your money online mm-hmm. with your phone, you invest in a good phone, and you connect with your friends than, you know, going to internet cafe, buying a computer and all this stuff. It's mm-hmm. not just, it's not on your priority list. The same is probably when you move at a certain age, you're not going to put a computer in your living room. For mm-hmm. what? You have a mobile phone, be it a feature phone. As, that's what I'm mentioning. We're moving away from internet to application. That's right. So for those people... Or websites to applications. I'm going just to an application. Yeah. I'm going to check with my family. As you mentioned before, sure. Filipinos are very family connected. And that whole OFW segment really drives us as well, this demand for connectivity. They just go in application. So mm-hmm. we will see this... Um, paradigma shift from mm-hmm. mobile internet to mobile application. It's already happening. It's its leading in the US and Europe. It's happening a bit on a slower pace here because we have to deal with the fact that not everybody can afford a high-end smartphone. Mm-hmm. And people usually don't shift here their phones every two years. Like in the US, you have an AT&T plan. They want to upgrade you. They say, just get the latest iPhone 12. Come on, sign up now. <laughs> and you sign up to this $300 iPhone data 12. plan I only want, for I want you, one right? of those. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it's not going to happen here because... The, the, as you mentioned, economics doesn't work. Even yeah. tech, we can't give out cell phones for free to everybody. We, we can't give everybody an iPhone 4. We would love. Okay. But it, it doesn't work. I mean, you know. Sure. Right? So we will see this growth of feature phones. And as long as like Facebook applications, they were used as a sales channel. Mm-hmm. And that will drive and attract more people. As we get more connect, we stay more online. It will just, we will see this base. Probably we will have one day 90 million people online. That would be fantastic. It doesn't matter which telco they are, but it's just the way. Eventually, it, it right? Yeah. Eventually, it will be online. Yeah. online we, have peop- we have 90 million mobile phones here. I mean, that's right. Subscriber identity mode. The SIM card. So imagine you have two, right? Or we all have three offers. And so, but we will be online somehow in each bill. And it is a threat to the telco. You have to admit it because you won't. But it's also an opportunity for us. 
As yeah. long as we find our space in there, we offer new possibilities, new products, we will thrive it because okay. you still need to be online. Okay. Right. So I, would, I think what we see is going away from mobile internet where you went like, I don't know, you remember the Nokia, the first Nokia's phones, you went to the small web browser and That's you went right. to Google sure. and then had, and you were, wow, <laughs> and it took like long time. Today you don't even bother any longer. You go to yeah. an application and another factor as well, less people actually do Google search. You tap into your social network. What do you like about the Samsung it Galaxy comes to you. Yeah, 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 you, like you, it. you like don't need to search for it anymore. three friends tell you it's fantastic and you can get and it there for cheap. That's where it is, right? And that's a thing. That's, we surpassed Google as a yes, starting point yes, for yes. the internet. Yeah. That's actually one thing. So you start your product experience no longer in a Google or going to a local store. You start it in your social network. Yeah. You just do this shout out. Ricky, that's social by design, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you, sh- you do this shout out. And it's happening mainly on mobile because uh, if you there's an interesting trend in the U.S. actually that people do more more mobile search when they are in a Walmart. Why they is stand that? In, they stand in front of the shelves. They look at the product, right? And they're and actually they, yeah. Actually, I think they have even <laughs> an application. You scan the barcode and it just searches online for product reviews. And okay. it, just imagine how this this is still run by machines and computers. Just imagine you do this with your social network. Your 25 friends who are always online. They would just tell you, you're, the geeks in your, in your crowd, I tell you, this phone is just, oh, no way, hands off, go for that one. You just make your product decision on this. And if I look at my own experience, I do make my product purchase decision based on my friend's recommendations. recommendations. You, you just validated our entire yeah. business model. It's just how... <laughs> <laughs> that's Thank how you. It, it, <laughs> no, it's just how we were driving, right? So okay. for us as a telco, we have to find our space. It's a challenge because as the f- people of Facebook and Co are very demanding. But we will find our space. But overall, it's for us to get as much or as many people as possible online. And this will create much more opportunities and new products and spin-off of Facebook, Google Plus, you ever mentioned, mm-hmm. that will just drive it. And so the big thing is really getting this 90 million people online. That's okay. what really yeah. is driving us. So we've established that penetration is there for Facebook. Definitely the penetration is there for mobile. And now your your jobs are actually to ad, make it a, a viable advertising platform, right? Because the numbers are there. How do we sell brands? How do we sell products using this channel? What have been the challenges that you've faced here in the Philippine market when it comes to advertising? Can we start with, uh, let's start with Narciso. Yeah, sure. You see, like... I mean, we got 30 million Filipinos Absolutely. on and, Facebook. I mean, you'd think it's a no-brainer to place an ad on Facebook, right? Um, yeah, are there any sure. challenges that you've, you've yeah, there, faced? Yeah, there, there, there are absolutely challenges that we face, right? And I've had this conversation in each of the three markets that, I've, uh, that I cover, right? And basically, it all comes down to one thing, right? Well, actually, a couple of things. Let's not say one thing. That's a beer talking, but... Um, <laughs> No, one, I, I think the primary uh, primary challenge, the primary hurdle is budget, budgetary, right? Or rather um, the, the allocation of the budget, right? Yeah. Or the allotment of budget to The allotment to of Facebook? budget to Facebook or to social. Um, I think, you know, the Filipino marketer is one of the most savvy in the region, right? But oh, are we? Are yeah, we? yeah. I, I would say without a doubt. Definitely one of the most savvy. Uh, I think that a lot of people here get it. Uh, I think they're enthusiastic about it. But then when it comes time to actually put together a plan that's going to have some meat and that's actually going to hit some decent KPIs, really move the dial, right? What co- what it comes down to is how much money do I have? Right? Okay. And when you talk about reaching 30 million people and you're talking about budget sizes which are anywhere between a thousand US and maybe four thousand US for the average uh, company, you're really, you know, for lack of a better term, you're pissing in the wind, right? You're pissing in the ocean. So to really move something at scale, you've got to put money behind it. And that's the major problem here. It's not the fact that they don't want to be on the platform. They do. But it's actually going up to finance and trying to get that money and divert that money from TV or radio or print or any of the other uh, medias that are out there. So for me, that would be the primary, uh, the primary hurdle. 
So we we are spending. We're putting some money on on Absolutely. Facebook, but it's not enough. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I would like to see more. <laughs> to get yeah. real results is what you're saying. <laughs> to get real tangible results and really move the dial, right? I mean, you take a look at some of these sites, right, and uh, or some of these advertisers, and compared to what they're spending on TV and the footprint, etc. I mean, it's minuscule, right? I mean, compared to what uh, they spend on TV right, or, or, to, or print to, or whatever. To any form of traditional media. And you're forsaking something that has a reach of 30 million people in exchange for what, right? Uh, is it price? I don't know. I, I, I would say our prices are fairly uh, fairly aggressive. You know? I don't but you think... need to change your mindset. Here. Well, that's, uh, that's it as well. Oh, right? That's hard, I mean, though. The man. mindset is the other thing. Here it's but... TVC, 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 like TV, sure. radio, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's really... And you know, I'm experiencing this on our own end as well, right? As you mentioned, like Facebook is highly targeted. You can mm -hmm. select, you know, right. uh, where you run your campaigns and so on. While TVC, I always call this is a you shoot in the dark. Yeah. I mean, the people who sit in front of the TV, do you really sure that they receive your brand but are, perception? But are you actually are you actually watching yeah. their commercials? So, right. So that's actually the thing now, and the the. Uh, from my experience, I mean, from the mobile advertisement side, it's actually it's the other way around. I always go to brands and they say, "Oh, we put everything on Facebook," right? Because you know that's that's the hip thing. So if you talk to this all this new breed of digital media officers and so on, right? They mm -hmm. they generate it. They always say like, "We go now to Facebook," and then we say, "But you know, Facebook is like that's it's a supporting element, but you have to get people when they're online and that stuff." And we say, "But mobile is always in their hand." You get them in any context you want. And I always say, they say, oh, yeah, but we got this from TBC. We moved it to Facebook. Uh, apparently, the social media spending in the Philippines is around 0.6% around of total it's, media it's spending. It's quite low. And then you look yeah. at overall online budgets. You're looking at anywhere. And, and they're, like folding, they're folding mobile and digital media already together. So we don't even have a distinguishing element between mobile and the social networks, be it Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Yeah, you end up fighting for yeah. a piece it, it of happens. one percent it happens. It happens. and they put all of these little your experimental correct. media correct. budget correct. your correct. digital budget at in this silo time. and this your yeah. mobile will go in a different one your display will go in a it's different the same one. thing so uh, you and me we're actually battling for the same budgets sure and then somebody still spends 10 million pesos for a tvc which has in return no visible impact in his revenue uptake right or any impact in his store uptake because you can't even measure. Now, we always say, you know, like social networks, online and mobile has one huge impact. You can measure it by response rates, KPI, how many people watched it, how many people actually clicked on it. In our cases, how many people responded it. And worst case, you have a drive to store, we can say how many people actually redeemed that product. So, yeah, but you could go about that any number of ways from a marketing standpoint to actually but measure your we spend, both your battling for the same, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's at 1%. But yeah. like you take a look at the overall reach of what mobile is, everybody's got a mobile phone. Yeah. Why aren't you getting more than TV, right? I know. They're, I had lengthy you discussions. You are not that. walking around <laughs> you know what in Makati with a TV, yeah. right? <laughs> like a huge-ass boombox. No. I don't right? know, man. I just saw this guy. Oh, right you saw earlier. that guy? And here's the other thing that pisses me off, right? Like all these guys spending on buses, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know what? Outdoor works and all this. But you know, they're not held to the same standard, Right. Do you actually sit there and every time you see a bus ad that you like, walk up to the bus, start slapping it, right? No, you don't, right? But uh, let, for let, whatever reason... RC, so let's, let's put this in, uh, in perspective, though. Um, I know that an ad on behind the bus mm -hmm. is actually 10,000 pesos to place an ad on a bus. How much does it cost to actually place an ad on Facebook? What would be the minimum? The minimum? Yeah. Which would be worth it for me? Yep. Yeah, that would make you sense. You want to talk about right? my, my like minimum buy? Yes, yes. <laughs> let's 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 put it in perspective. How much does it cost? Well, it, to actually place an can, ad in here, Facebook. Here, here's the thing, right? It really depends, right? And I know you guys are going to hate that answer, but it really depends on a number of factors, right? What's your target market? What's your your but you could spend three cents, right, to put three an cents. ad up on Facebook, okay. right? Anybody can put an ad up on Facebook. Okay. So there's really no barrier to entry. It's just 
how much do you want that advertising to work for you and spending accordingly, right? But if you're just going to put it down to a single price point, yeah, I beat that bus guy, right? Cost you 10,000 pesos, what is that, $200? I could run a campaign $5 a day, right? And probably it, get you better returns than- If, I ran, a, if I ran an ad on Facebook for, let's say, $2,000, that's like 100,000 pesos, how many Filipinos will I actually reach? Or how many Filipinos will see my ad? That really depends, right? On the targeting, of course, right? Yeah, it'll, but, it'll come down to the targeting. Okay, let's say I want to target... Um, let's, say, let's say I just don't want to target. I just want to lay down 100,000 pesos. How many Filipinos can I reach on Facebook? Technically, you could reach like 100,000, right? Or even more because really what you're paying for is that click, right? That engagement, oh, that's that right. interaction. That's right. So it could show your impression levels could be through the roof. Maybe no one's seeing it, right? Uh -huh. Or maybe no one's engaging with it. So, I mean, really it comes down to, yeah, you're targeting, how much you're spending. It, it, it all comes back down to the, the basic, uh, yeah, how, how you want to target and who you're, who, you're looking to, who you're looking to reach. So it's, like I said, you know, it depends, right? It really does depend. Christian, what about for, for mobile? How much does it cost to actually place an ad on mobile? Well, I want to answer one thing before. You know, you don't get fired when you run a TVC. That's why all these media agencies, when they go to their clients, the first thing oh, they propose yeah. is a TVC. Let's run a nice brand where some women runs around in Boracay and, you know, offering you rum or whatever. You don't get fired with that, right? That's that's the first thing. So I'd like to see this ad, though. Uh, it's a woman like, running around Boracay. I think there's one right now. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I even remember an ad. Uh, amazing. Wow, that company should be just clapping themselves on the shoulders now. Um, but Was this with a firewalker? <laughs> Yeah, or, or, we're yeah, two. Yeah, the, wow, the guy yeah. gets a bonus now. The guy gets a bonus. Whoever made his ad get a bonus. You got found two guys in Makati. Remember. Nevertheless, I think, as you mentioned, we're battling for budgets, which is already worse because we both are in the unknown territory. Sure. We are. You know, it's like you have to risk something. Now, media agencies usually are very risk averse. They just bet their their clients' money on the. Best thing they know. That's TVC. They do it since 20 years. It works. They move from black and white and to, to, to color. Um, on our end, we see we're battling with the likes of Facebook uh, for actually getting the budgets, which are pretty low. Nevertheless, on our end, it's like we tell brands, what do you want to do? Awareness? Or you want to have a, a certain campaign, drive to store, drive to action. So that makes actually your, your thing. And then you target. I want to sell a brand to everybody who is 20 years old and lives in Makati. You can just break it down. We can really break it down for you. That can be a campaign from 15,000 pesos to 1.5 million pesos. Okay. Yeah, right away. So, okay. It depends, it's right? Really, on your targeting function. But that's one thing which scares advertisers, especially their agencies. If you go to a brand that says, I love, I want to reach all mums. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You go to their media agency and say, oh, that scares me. Okay. Because how do you define mum? And then they start yeah, they to... Can't, they, they, they can't they target. Check, it's check, left, right. And they say, oh, maybe you should make a TVC. So we just... The problem or the... The thing, the advantage of TVC is you don't get an instant feedback. If somebody doesn't like your advertisement, you won't hear about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you won't make it to can, but huh, <laughs> right? On mobile, and I guess it's the same on social networks like Facebook, you have an instant real-time um, real feedback. Absolutely. If they don't like your campaign, you see it in real time. You just nobody answering your call, call to store. Yeah, your engagement's not your going engagement to be there. Your engagement's not working. Won't comment, yeah, people will and that not scares like. media agencies because that means the client will say, your campaign just didn't generate any buzz. Next year, I give my money to somebody else. Okay. So the agencies here play very safe. They play on Facebook, but not seriously, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. and I'm aware of this because we're battling for the same budget. They play on mobile, but not seriously. Now, on mobile, we say, we always go there, look, we have more eyeballs than the top five nationwide daily newspapers. So That's right. You, so if you want to make something serious, you yeah. spend 20,000 pesos advertisement campaign in the, I don't know, Manila who, Bulletin. Who reads newspapers, though? They do here, because the, the media buyers here are from uh, medieval ages, they are 1970s. Yeah, but the, the, the population, like if you pick out a 24-year-old here, right? Nobody reads what it. What paper do you read? The Bulletin? The Star? What? Dude, no one reads papers. I know. No one reads them, so but why are you buying The suggestion this? from the media agency will be based on a plan they have worked on for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. 
Then they, and they already enhance it with Facebook. Don't worry about it. So yes. top of the line is already Facebook. But bottom line is like, we need to do a TVC. It's like shooting in the dark. We need to make newspapers because <laughs> if we, those we have, yeah, with the, you can actually see it. You yeah. can hold it. There's no. a tactile You experience. know why they do this on TVC and newspaper? Because the big boss wants to see exactly. results. He, wants he is not happy. It. He wants first clip out thing in the newspaper and it actually came he out he wants a recording yeah. of the TVC on yeah. air how, how, how many R- Ricky how many times have you had this right well, I, I don't know if you've had this but if for sure you had the same he was I, like I've, please I've, give me a yeah. DVD give where me, you show give, it was on right. ABS or CBN and give me I'm a sure. screenshot right yeah and I'm like dude one you geo-targeted it to Indonesia two right he's like I can't see my ad yeah because it's geo-targeted to Indonesia that's right and you're not an 18 to 24 year old girl Dude, you're 45 <laughs> years old. You're the CMO. There's of no way he's going to see that. See yeah, it, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's really just the problem. It's like, we, what I was mentioning, we need that mindset change. We need people who risk. There are small agencies in this country who actually risk because they're just like maybe young people. They don't care. They can just go to the next job. But the big agencies here, you can just put them all on the wall and name them the same. They are really risk averse if it comes to But as evolution has shown us, a dinosaur, even though he try, tried to survive, mm-hmm. he actually got extinct by trying to survive. Yeah. Um, so um, it's the same. So um, for me, it's like we need this mindset change. It's not expensive to do mobile. It's not expensive to do Facebook. It just needs people who are willing and brands and brands as well. Yeah, it's having the courage to actually yes, sit The courage there. to try something. Yeah, and t- the, take the your fe- skirt off. Correct. The feedback will be amazing. Sack They're actually up. engaging face to face with the consumers and they get an instant feedback. Mm-hmm. How many times do you actually have responded to a number which is written in a print that text your blah blah blah? Yeah. Oh, I talked to somebody yeah. and, and they actually got one reply once. Mm-hmm. That's a famous big brand in this country. And mm-hmm. He said, "Why do you still do still do print ads?" And he told me because my boss wants to see the clipping. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You know, like just just uh, and I'm not going to name any clients just to protect the innocent, right? But. Um, they have been quite progressive and they're quite quantitative in in their analysis of the channels that work for them. And the least performing channel, print. The best performing channel, online. And any one of the online verticals that, you know, we'll we'll talk about mobile, we'll talk about your, your standard display search or even social. It's going to be online. That's going to be the most effective one for you. Right. There's an interesting fact. I have a I have several clients who actually use mobile to drive to Facebook. It's a it's an interesting mixture of two <laughs> great unknowns right. working together. Now we say, why do you need to do this? But they they like it. They like they need to like have people on their Facebook page so they can analyze them. I said, but we already can sure. analyze them for you. But here's the thing, right? Yeah, we want the people on our Facebook page. They have to so like why us. don't you actually advertise on Facebook no, more? I think, and then the, you've got these TVCs yeah. that are like, "Hey, come like us on Facebook," but Which you've are never posted seen, on the Facebook page. As but well. you've <laughs> never seen their ads on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, you're spending how much much on a 30 second slot, yeah. right? When I, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so. I like what uh, I like what Christian said about two great unknowns, Facebook and mobile. Um, I'd like to leave our listeners with this one. What is uh, what is the future for uh, digital advertising here in the Philippines, both for Facebook and for mobile? And we will end our maiden episode of drinking digital with that. Again, we have Narciso Reyes from AdMax reselling Facebook exclusively here in the Philippines. And we have Christian Bessler from Globe uh, heading the mobile advertising group. Uh, what can we leave our listeners with with regards to digital advertising and marketing in 2012? What does the future look like? Let's start with Christian. Mm, it will be hyper-local. Mobile will be a key driver. It will be fully integrated. For me, social networks are no competitor. They're just an a driver for me to mobile. But however, I believe it will we will increase the level of relevance in mobile advertisement to you. Okay. You are right now in Makati on that corner, Ayala Avenue, and somebody wants to reach you. I will get you. You'll there. be able to do yes, that. Yes, and okay. I will get my and message to you there. I will tell you, Ricky Nestle wants to sell you this right now. And if you walk <laughs> now into Glorietta Three, you get a coffee for free. All right. And this will work 
And I think this will be the future. And people will not be annoyed. And you know why? Why? Because it's just walking distance away. Okay. They will say, this is relevant to me. I can just go there. Okay. Right? So that's that's where we go. And we will see more and further integration between social networks and that whole thing we call mobile. And they will just, you know, work closely together. Mobile advertisement will lead to Facebook. Facebook will lead to mobile advertisement. So that that's it's not an point. that's yeah. not an arc enemy for me, mm-hmm. right? It's just part of the game to actually engage people more on their mobiles. Second, more people will go mobile, which okay. will help both of us to reach more people. And I will see the I always see I will see the death of T V C. The death, yeah. the death of TVC. Yes, not, maybe not in 2012. Those are, but those are strong words, my friend. It's actually one of my goals to kill TV. Yes. All right. In terms of that advertiser thing, twice does it make my sense to spend 10 million on a TVC okay. rather than spend 10 million on target advertisement, where actually you mm-hmm. with your Nestle will be able to track in the areas you spend money, okay. your sales will go up because okay. you can't do this today. Okay. If you honestly answer, you will not be able to trace it. You will see, oh, I had this nice TVC, nice women dancing in Boraca, having Nescafe and so on, right? Mm-hmm. But you won't see any impact on your purchase. So what we, as a telco, will be able to do with social networks, we will tell you, you spend there and we will tell you how your sales will go up there. Okay. We can forecast this for you. All right. Thank you, Christian. So Thank for for mobile, the future is Great. hyper-local. Yes. And the death of TV. Yes. <laughs> what about you, Narciso Reyes from Facebook? What is, uh, what's going to happen in 2012 for Looking digital advertising? What, well, what I, is I, there? I agree with a lot of the, um, a lot of Christian sentiments, right? I mean, I think that you're going to see a flattening of the landscape, definitely. Uh, and when I say that, there is going to be that interconnection between mobile and, uh, and a platform like Facebook. And what people are going to uh, to keep on doing is actually building on top of that existing social framework, right? So what's going to happen? You know, I mean, we don't even know, right? But like, if you speak to a guy like Zuckerberg, the numbers that he throws out there, it's like we've basically only started to scratch the surface in terms of what we can do with this as a platform, right? Maybe even less than 5% of its true potential. Um, so for me, the growth is going to be exponential, right? Social is going to be intertwined into everything that we do, whether it be mobile, whether it be TV, whether it be radio, any form of media out there is going to have some sort of social uh, extension built into it, right? Because that's just the way that people are, are, uh, are consuming media these days. This is how people are behaving. So in terms of spend, in terms of time on site, or in time, or or any of those metrics, I'm going. I I would, uh, yeah. I put my money on it. It's going to be a pretty good year in terms of growth. Okay, so for Facebook, for social media, for digital advertising, it's just going to grow exponentially. All right. So that's about all the time we have for today. This is the maiden episode, the first episode of Drinking Digital. This has been Ricky Baizas. Uh, I'd like to thank Narciso Reyes and Christian Bessler for coming in here uh, today. Thank you very much for your insights, gentlemen. It has been very interesting. Watch out for uh, the next episode of Drinking Digital, the first and only podcast here in the Philippines that discusses everything about digital communications, digital advertising, and marketing. See you again next time.